Welcome back. It's another evening gardening time here. These are uh, cassava variety, yucca. Uh, yucca with one C, not two C's. That's yucca, and it's a completely different plant, so don't get it messed up. Yucca is the Spanish name for manioc, manahat, escalenta, cassava. And this is a specific variety that I have not grown before that I got from a research station. Um, in English, you would call it uh, butter stick. Butter stick is the name of the variety. And I've tasted it before, and it's got this like buttery, awesome flavor to it. It's better than most of the cassavas that you'll eat. And I was able to get a couple of pieces of it, but for the last few months, I had them in that pot and they were just sitting. So I've got to get them in the ground. And it's really dry still. We haven't really gotten any rain yet. I'm gonna stick them in the ground here and I'm just gonna carry over water to them just to get them in. And they're gonna look terrible for a little while, but I think they will recover if we keep water on them. I'm just gonna stick them in here. I know how to plant machete style. It's so dry. Wow. It's dry. Inches down, it's still dry. And alive. This ground here, I actually loosened up with the broad fork, so it's not as bad as it could be. You really got to loosen clay a little bit before you put any cassava in it. There we go. Because the roots have got to be able to grow through the ground. So if the ground is too hard, if you just stick it straight in clay, it does not do well. I have a question about cassava. Go for it. If you, since it's a root crop, if you were to plant it deeper, the cutting, would yes. you get bigger or bigger roots or more roots, better roots? You know what I'm saying? That's a good question. I'm not sure. See, I've, the problem, my background with growing cassava, I grew it for years, but I grew it in Florida. And in Florida, we had very sandy soil where I was. There are areas of clay in Florida. So I grew it in sandy soil. You basically just ram the stick into the ground without digging first, and you would get cassava and you could just dig it up and it made nice big beautiful roots. Then I came here and I tried to do the same thing. First cassava I planted here just sat in the ground and did not make good roots at all. It was all gnarled and knotted because it couldn't force its way through the clay very well. So <laughs> I'm not sure. I never pay much attention. In Florida I would bury it easily sometimes as much as you know eight inches deep into the ground. Here I uh, I don't I don't I mean, I'm lucky if I get it right, into the ground six inches. I was going to say, as much as you can possibly actually <laughs> yeah, get Yeah, I don't even... That's not any fun. Yeah. I'm going to mound it up a little bit around the stems, though. Let's just bring some around it. Give it a little more support because there is a decent amount of wind here as you've heard on our videos whistling by as we try to do this sort of thing. Let's make a little cassava space. That is beautiful. One of the uh, kids said that they were gonna roast a mango and then they realized they couldn't get it out. So there is a roasted mango. It's very roasted, <laughs> a very roasted mango. That's value added right there. That's what that is. I'm not gonna dare you to, to eat this one. No, I'm not gonna eat anything today. I'm, I'm done eating <laughs> for a while. <laughs> That's a biochar mango is what that is. That's a carbon sequestration mango.
I'm gonna clear this area right here, which is kind of to the right as you come in uh, to the lot, because this is mostly clear already. So what I'm gonna do instead of trying to burn all this stuff or anything, I'm gonna let a lot of it rot down. And I'm just gonna dump it all in a big pile right here. And I'll probably plant some pumpkins at the base of it and just let them cover it. They can use it for a trellis, which is a big mess with hopefully some pumpkins on top of it. And over time it'll rot down and I don't have to worry about clearing it all. We'll just kind of consolidate all of the debris and let nature work on it through the rainy season. It's gonna sink down a lot, I bet, over the course of the year. What do you think? I think, um, uh, yeah, I did not mean for this to happen. I was holding a stick, you know, I roast them before. You just hold a stick over the fire and then it slipped off the stick and fell into the fire. <laughs> it seems there's still some okay inside, but the outside is totally turned to charcoal. Cajun style. <laughs> So much for my nice mound. So you're being kind to the pepper plant? I like the peppers. Just not gonna eat them straight next time. And if you, any of you guys know out there if these are Tabascos, I've never grown them before. I guess I could Google the shape, but I'll let you guys do it. Tell me if these are Tabasco peppers. Poor things are so thirsty all the time. If you water at night, they soak it in overnight. That's when plants actually do a lot of their growing. So, especially in a dry time, let's go ahead and put the plants in, do it overnight, and uh, make sure that they're, you know, they're soaked in the evening. If you have them dry all night long, they're not gonna get the growing done that they need. And I know people say, don't water your plants in the evening, they're gonna get diseases or whatever. Yeah, well, when it's dry, don't worry about that. If you have a, uh, you know, if you're prone to, like it's very humid conditions and all that kind of thing, yeah, water them in the morning instead, provided they have enough water that's gonna get them through the night. But they're gonna do a lot of their growing overnight when it's cool, and then the next day, bang, the little leaves come up and they start collecting sunlight and making sugar. They got enough water to operate, they're gonna be much happier the next day. So I give them a little, I like to water them at night and just let them go through the night, at least with a little water. Uh, I'm burning and burning and burning lots of these really thorny bits here. And uh, these ashes in the bottom I'm gonna use later when I propagate the yams that we're gonna plant as soon as the rain comes and softens the ground enough for us to actually be able to dig holes for yams. Cause I don't fancy grabbing a jackhammer to plant yams. Uh, probably the calories grown compared to calories expended just doesn't work out well if we do it that way. Once again, the baby says it's time to go home and stop gardening and pay attention to him. So visit us on the web, please, at thesurvivalgardener.com. And I hope you have a really great evening. And may your thumbs always be green. Thank you.